My fellow listeners, gospel music to make you shake your bed slippers up. And if you need a Dunlop, you can take it off and move your Time, same thing. Relax and leave it to Pastor Edwards. But nice to have you on board, thank you. Good evening, YouTube and Facebook and Twitch and
better hurry up. One sister Shasha. Good evening, sister Loma. Good evening, sister Mo. Good evening, Sarah. Classical music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties, and all along the journey. a better view go to www.fgrc.co.uk and you can click Bible study and you should have a big screen on your TV www.fgrc.co.uk Woo! And after that, you can go to Bible study. We shall reach you anywhere you are. Underneath the cellar, upstairs, in the dining room, music. Hallelujah. Just move your show. Hurry up, hurry up. Go on, Sister Sasha. Hurry up. Huh? Listen to what Sister Sasha said. Hurry up. Hurry up, church. Remember to send your messages through if you got any burning message to question. I can't answer it this week, I'll answer it next week. But hurry up! Hurry up! Gospel music to make you stand and dance around your house and worship. Even if you don't feel good, just worship. Hurry up! Good evening. Nice to have you on board. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for the month, the last Wednesday in June. So we're definitely halfway through the year. One more day left and June closed on us. We thank you for speed life. You have been taking us through some valleys, some rivers, some green grass and some lovely pastures. It was a mixture, but Lord, you have been there for us. Through sometimes tears are running down eyes and sometimes we walk around our house and say we can't believe it but you've been there to to soothe our sorrows and heal our wounds and you've been there to dry our tears Lord, we worship you sometimes we don't understand the don't worry about it you can't father him out so lord we just come to worship you let you know we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And I thank God for gospel music. The Bible writer said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. And so, dear Father, when others have to drink a few pints and a few guineas and smoke and, and, and do all sorts, Lord, we can say that our source is Jesus. So bless this evening. Bless our study. Bless our listeners. Bless their homes and bless their family. Let their special radiance of blessing 
flow through their glasses, their windows, through their rooms, and wherever they are, even outside, let the atmosphere that they're breathing, the fresh air, let it be a fresh air of blessings and healing. And I need you, Lord. I need your guidance. I need your direction. I need you right now as we look at your word in Jesus' name. Everybody say a big amen. Everybody say a big amen amen we're gonna go right all the way over and you remember that i said to you we're going to be looking at um i think i'm hoping you did see my display you can let me know what you think about it and while you're getting your bible out i'm just going to give you an introduction of another song and i'm ready ezekiel chapter 19 you got so many songs to sing some to get your way some to take you back home for everybody, the children, the adults. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm very happy. Ezekiel chapter 19. Thank you very much. As you know, I'm a crazy guy. You know, when it comes to gospel music, I, I said to my wife, oh, if I'm not very well and if they're not getting any response out of me, just put on some gospel music, some good old medleys. And if I don't move, then you know I'm out. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you tell you now, you guys have to put on some good gospel music. You, 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 know I mean? you have to put on some Sister Sasha, and you have to put on some Grace Thrillers and you got to put on some Mavia Providence and, and, you know, and if none of those music wake me up, then, you know, Pastor Edward is out. The guy is out. You're not going to bring him back. No doctor going to bring him back because if that gospel music not going to Bridget Butler, not going to wake me up and gospel music all over me, you can even put the speaker near me, Tubbs, you know, and if I'm not getting that, then, you know, he's dead. He's gone. He's gone, gone, gone. Because I love gospel music. I like to worship, right? I like to worship the Lord, worship him in spirit. I want to worship him in truth yeah because god is good amen god is good say all the time and all the time say god is good yeah man, he's good you know i love jesus i love him i love him and uh, you know i think we always sing this song at church to say i love him 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 and they keep saying i love him on monday love him on a tuesday love him on a wednesday Love him on a Thursday, love him on a Friday, love him on a Saturday, love him on a Sunday, back to Monday. Hey, God bless you. 
hey, that's enough now, me, uh, and you hear me. Well, that's me, you know, you can't get it out of me. I'm just infested with the love of God. I love Jesus because he first loves me, right? And so we've been looking and we are in Ezekiel chapter 19. And when we look at Ezekiel chapter 19, then we look, it was one of them scriptures are full of lament. And we need to look at that and we need to look at lamentation and we want to look at lament and what is lament meant. And um, I'm going to run through some of the reading of the scriptures. I think we shall sort it out. Now, moreover, Ezekiel 19, whether you have NIV, KGV or whatever V you got, I've got KGV. So, you know, that's King James Version. So if you can't understand it, it's not that I'm speaking double Dutch. You understand me? It's just because I'm reading a different version, but I believe it's the same word. Moreover, thou, moreover, take thou up a lamentation for the prince of Israel and say, what is thy mother? What is thy mother, man? A lioness, she lay down among the lions. She nourished her wives among the young lions and she brought up one of her whelps. It, it became a young lion and it learned to catch the prey. Hallelujah. So, you know, I think if you watch wildlife like me, yeah, you will understand that what a well a whelp is, it's a lion cub. You understand me? So, so often times, you know, the lion and the lay down and the lioness, and which is the female, and you know, lay among, among the lion, she nourished her little young cubs, you know, and um, and she brought up one of her whelps. Uh, it it became a young lion. You know, it takes up to two, three years for the mother to wean a lion because guess what? They take some feeding. And most time, you see, the mother is working hard for her little cub, her little whelp, uh, a whelp. You can call it cub or you can call it whelp. It's the same, no difference. And it learned to catch the prey. So mom would teach it sometimes, you know, uh, sorry for those little um, um, antelope. Sometimes, uh, you know, the mother catches a little antelope and that little antelope is a little young one and she won't kill it, but she'll bring it to the cub. And the cubs grow and say, you are mate, you need to practice how things are happen. You understand me? And the cub will be there running around, jumping up and down, take it for joke and fun and hold it. And, but the problem, the mouth is not strong enough. But guess what? The cub will be watching mommy and they're learning from mom. Do you know that children learn a lot from their mom? Because, you know, the majority of teaching is from their mom because most time daddy's out or, you know, sometimes dad's not there, but mom got to be there because mom is the suckling and mom is the one who's looking after a, a baby, you know. And so it devour men. That's it grows up. The nation also heard of him. He was taken in their pit and they brought him with chains, the time up unto the land of Egypt. Now when she saw that she had waited and her hope was lost, then she took another of her cub, a whelps, and made him a young lion again. And he went up and down among the lions. He became a young lion himself. Grow up. You know, a lot of lion cubs, there's a large percentage of them being killed by hyenas, you know, in the wildlife. Hyenas kill a lot of them. Because when the mother gone to hunt and the cubs, always the cubs, you know, they're always running around and I, you know, started them. And sometimes even um, Cheeto, you know, they did that and all. They all did it to the one another and learn to catch prey and devour men. And he knew their desolate places and he laid waste their cities. And the land was desolate and the fullness thereof by the noise of his roaring man. You know, sometimes you hear them lion roaring. It, it's even come through them speakers on the TV and you could tell he's not very happy. And they roar like lion. Then the nation set against him and every side from the providence and spread their net over him. He was taken in their pit. And if he can catch you, you're dead. Sorry for you. And they put him in ward, in chain, and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him into hold that his voice should not, no more be heard upon the mountain of Israel. So he was under a lot of restriction. Thy mother is like vine in thy blood, planted by waters. She, 
she was fruitful and, and she had strong rods for the scepter. We're going to look at scepter also. We're going to look at lamentation a bit. And for the scepters, scepters of that bear rules and her statue was exalted among the thick branches and she appeared in her height with the multitude of her branches, but she was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground and the east wind dried up her fruit. Her strong rods were broken and wither. You know, the fierce you know, wind dried up her fruit, her strong rods, yep. And, and, and the fire consumed them. And now she's planted in the wilderness, in the dry and thirsty ground. And the fire is gone out of, of a rod and her branches, which are devour her fruit, so that she have no strong rods to be a scepter, no more power, no more authority. Man, she's being grounded. But guess what? To be a scepter to rule. This is the lamentation and shall be for a lamentation. May God bless his word in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Hallelujah. And so we discover that it's important that we as children of God we stay with God other counsel from nobody else we should not go back down into Egypt and look for nothing we should make sure we take all the counsel from God himself because do you know that if we get messed up we'll be in trouble with God, you understand me? And that's why it's very important that as children of God, remember, please make your comment through um, WhatsApp. You can type it through uh, through Facebook. I think if you send it to us, you'll see it. I won't know unless you say hello. I know Facebook is working. I don't know if WhatsApp is working, but it, guess what? Uh, yeah, um, YouTube, not WhatsApp, YouTube, man. You can make it through them. Type up, let me know what's going on. Let you know if you have some comment, send it through, yeah? But I want you to understand, you know, lamentation for the king of the of Judah. It's what I mean. There was a lamentation for. It's important that as church that we go God's way. Yeah, you know, having faced all Israel, you know, up to personal responsibility. Ezekiel now bring the lesson home by writing a lament. Right, he wrote a lament for the king of Judah. You know, called the prince of Israel. Right. And so he wrote a lament for Je Jehoahaz and Jehoiachin, right? These were the men to whom Israel had to look. But in each case, they had failed. That's the thing when we fail, you understand? We got to make sure and ensure and be careful that we don't fail God, you understand? And sometimes we don't seem to realize when we fail. We just seems like Samson, I can shake as before. We need to realize that when we fail, we need to identify him. That's why the Bible said, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it's not in us, we are none of his. We need to have that resurrection power in us because that resurrection power is our sat now. That resurrection power is our detection and it will detect when we are going wrong, of course. Because I tell you something, Israel had looked but in each case, Israel has failed. Israel is like unto a lioness, right? A lioness, cub. And the cub are the prince of Judah. You know, we need to understand that God values and knows is important. And I like the, uh, um, the analogy that they use about the lion and the lioness and the lion cubs, that God is letting us know that, look, we as um, a lion, the enemy can overtake us because I think we read earlier on that how they got the lion and they chain him up. The timing came, my man, they, you know, I think it was verse 10. And they, and they put him in ward in chain and brought him to the king of Babylon. And they brought him into holes that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountain of Israel. And I want you to understand that if we get, ourselves muddle up the devil will chew us up yes you see all these scripture that we read and we are going through on the bible the bible is there for our instructions 
The Bible is there to reprove. The Bible is there to, to correct us. It is there to get us in line. So that means we don't make errors. You understand me? We are learning from other people's mistakes. Yeah. So their faith is then lamented, a faith, you know, which was the, the result of the fact that they did evil, evil in the sight of God. Israel has gone, of course. <coughs> and you have to just pick it up from Ezekiel chapter two, come in and read, and then you realize that Ezekiel, you know, the Israel, they have wandered away from God. And they began to serve idol, they began to you know wonder. And we understand that the scope of the chapter is like that of the 17, right? It's foretell and bewail and the ruin of the house of David. Is what I mean. And um, you know, and we need to understand that. When we begin to get messed up, things will go really wrong. You understand me? Uh, you know the ruin of the house of David in the in the um, uh, calamities of uh, in the exit of Josiah's son. Right? We need to understand leaders. is It's important that you have a good leader who is sound, who know what they're doing, who is not after filthy lucre. And who is not leading because of the eyesight, you know, we need to make sure that we lead under the Holy Spirit, right? Under the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of Judah and the house of David are here to compare to a lioness, right? And this brings to the young lion, you know, the fierceness and, you know, and the revenues of these, you know, but hunters down as much as they are fearful. And as much as these lions, I mean, you want to see them, everybody's scared of them. Even those big old elephants. The elephant is all right. But guess what? When it comes to night, the elephant high is a little bit weak. They can't see at night. But the lion of a night, which is so many times more than human being, they can see in thick darkness. You know, the elephant probably can only smell. But these hunters, sometimes they're being hunted down and they're taken in a net by the Egyptians and the Chaldeans, right? They've been taken in a net. And if you look back on Ezekiel chapter 19 and verse 2, and they say, what is thy mother? A lion, she lay down among the lions. She nourished her wealth among the lions. And she brought up, you know, you can read it down. And when you take it down, all the way almost down to verse 9, then you realize that she, her life, has become in danger. Verse 9 tells us. You can read about the lion and what they are and what they can do. So look, don't think that you and I are too big for the enemy to destroy us. Look at a lion. Everybody's scared of a lion. The elephant is running from him. The hyena is running from him. And, you know, and, and, and as powerful as those um, big bull cows are, you know, that we, you know, sometimes they themselves is legging it unless they have a crowd of them. You see what I mean? To really take over the lion. But sometimes they are running. But I'll let you know, but yet the lion fall into the trap of the enemy. My God, let me tell you something, church of God. We need to make sure. Don't go mess about with the devils and go in his camp. Go and start shoot up and, and be like we are bad because we are not bad. The enemy, if he can't get you, he gets somebody to get you. I think we always use the term in Jamaica, and I said it in the Caribbean, probably all over the island, uh, but I know Jamaica, they say, they said, if they can't catch Kwaku, they'll catch his shot. That means if they can't catch them, the adult, they will get the child. You know, it's wrong, but guess what? People are very evil, right? That kingdom and family are compared to a vine. And this princess uh, to the branches, which had been strong, these branches been strong, they have been flourishing, but either were or soon would be broken off and they would be burned. You understand I me? Mean? So when we look at um, from verse um, Ezekiel 19 and verse 10, we realize that you know, thy mother is like a vine in thy blood, planted by the water. She was fruitful. That, that's a past tense. She was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. Yeah, she was. But let me tell you something. And she had strong rods for the scepter, right? We're going to come to that. Of them that bear rules uh, and their statues was exalted among the thick branches uh, and she appeared in her height and with multitude of her branches. She was in full peak, uh, but she was plucked up 
in fury. She was cast down to the ground and the yeast wind they dried up her fruit, a flourishing. Let me tell you something. If the devil get chance, he mash us up. You understand me? He, he smash us up. Uh, you know, do you know what? Uh, the Bible said, he, you know, when the enemy shall come back, God that he will lift up a standard and that's why we got to be careful what we do and that's why this lament goes out uh, and i'm going to come to lament what is lament right that uh, lament you know you know from how do we learn of much of lament uh, recall david there are many people in the bible who lament you understand me and there's different reason why they lament yeah lament and david and job and isaiah you know in their respective time and lament of mourning right their grief is symbolized with ash you remember david he put on ash and sackcloth hallelujah and uh, and, and and make it with with, with honest and, and anguish and, and he ball i think in jamaica we would say we ball the caribbean and the caribbean people i don't keep saying jamaica the caribbean we would say we ball you know we eyes and you know and in scripture to you we back in the bible days they usually have wailing women right wailing women they usually is a special people who when things are going wrong they were mourner and they were called to grieve in the community and they will lament bitterly they will lament they would cry man yeah you know i, I heard that in america if you have a funeral uh, you can um you can pay for people to come and cry for you if you want. You know what I mean, if, if the family have a bit of dry, dry eyes, you can get lamenters who can come and they can cry and make it look good that they are missing their family and they really feel it. But guess what? They pay somebody to cry. You understand me? But 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 in the Bible days, there'll be lamenters. Uh, there'll be people who lament. You know, they cry over what's going on. You understand me? You know, you know, professional mourners, uh, and they'll be called to grieve in the community. You know, and mourn bitterly. And when we look in Jeremiah chapter nine, it's nothing new. It's nothing new, right? In Jeremiah, wailing women are the ones who voice the pain and whose lament, you know, you know, you know, um, serve as a memo, um, a memory of what and who were lost. You understand me? What and who? What's going on? Without the wailing women, witness a victim of violent attack. Um, you know, uh, will fall and uh, and things would happen. And these women would cry, they would lament and, and they would call. But Jeremiah chapter nine, and we're gonna read from verse one. And at one point, Jeremiah have to come to that place where Jeremiah said, all oh, that my head were water and my eyes a fountain of tears uh, that I may weep day and night. He would lament day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. All oh, that I had, I had in the wilderness, um, a lodging place of, of wayfaring men that I may leave my people and go from them for they are uh, for they being adulterous and uh, and an and assembly of uh, treacherous uh, men yeah dangerous uh, the lord you know and so we look at the lord lament that you know he has no choice but to judge them and they verse chapter verse 3 said in jeremiah and, and they bend their tongue like their their bow and for lies they tell lies the adulterous and liar could you imagine how it grieved jeremiah when he see god's people you know are telling lies you know lying they have become adulterous you know they're behaving badly they haven't got no respect they haven't got no shame but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth for they proceed from evil to evil and they know not me saith the lord but let me tell you something one thing about god is sometimes we think we get away and we can do what we want and nobody see us but let us not fall on the wrong side of god because i tell you something whether that specialist was trained in cambridge oxford or whether they train one of the top university if we fall on the wrong side of God, I don't care where they, they, they have been trained and got their degree and the masters, they can't help you. It's only God can. And once mercies has gone, we are in serious trouble. You understand me? And Israel oftentimes uh, would push God to that limit uh, where mercies has come to the edge. You understand me? Mercies has come to the edge. Take heed, everyone, of his neighbors. 
Jeremiah 9, 4, and trust ye not in any brother, for every brother will utterly you know, supplant, and every neighbor will walk and slander. Can't trust nobody. Sometimes uh, people just slander your name. They only just make one mistake and they say that they really cut you to pieces, not knowing why, why, but they will. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. Uh, they have taught their tongue to speak lies. Lie, you know, lying lips. And you know what? I don't mind people telling lies, but if they are telling lies in church and they are Christian, then that bothers me a lot. I'm glad the church hasn't got no liars because, you know, everyone in the church does speak the truth and they don't tell lies. But if they do, I'm, I would only ask them, please pack it in because God doesn't like liars. Liars will jeopardize jeopardize the, somebody's future. You understand know I me? Mean? God doesn't like to see when the, you know, the, the, you know, the feeble ones being pushed out of their little bread. God doesn't like it. And we with themselves to commit iniquity, right? Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Uh, you know, you know, through deceit, they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Uh, I think I need to read a little bit more because it sounds, I'm going to take it down to verse 9. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will melt them. I will melt them. Man, I don't know what you're going to use. But God said, I will melt them. So now you see why Ezekiel is talking about this lament, this crying. Because it's a terrible thing to fall into the hand of God. It is a serious thing when we fall into the hand of God. We can't afford to do that. I will melt them and I will try them for how shall I do for the daughters of my people? They took. Their tongue is as an arrow, shut out. It speaketh deceit, and one speaketh peaceable to his neighbor with his mouth. But, and this is the danger. This is the danger, Church of God, that I want us to look at, you know, and I wish we, I could see it so we could talk about it. You know, you know, because some people with their mouth, I love you. They speak good things about you. But in, in, in the heart, in the heart, you see, we look at the word that comes out of Joe Blog's mouth and Miss Blog's mouth, right? And we say they are good friends. But if they get the chance to cut you down, they cut you down. In their heart, the Bible said they have something totally different. They have something totally different. They lay wait, lay in his wait. And shall not I visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be at vengeance on such a nation as this? Let me tell you something. You can read from verse 10 going about the destruction that God planned. But if we know anyone and we believe and understand that they, with their mouth, they are very good with their mouth, but you can tell from the thing that is coming out of their heart, it's not nice. You need to tell them, say, look, it's not nice god doesn't like it you understand me god doesn't like it uh, you know because god said he will visit them and he will take care of things so that's why we have these uh, lament women these women of who lament and professionally and and we look back in jeremiah 9 we just look back there you know the other one you know who, who vice the pain of what's going on and jeremiah went on to say what's going on Jeremiah have understand that the things that's going on is not right. So Jeremiah said, oh, that my head was warped. See, Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Isaiah, those guys are the same prophet, major prophet around town. And they sort of write uh, and their words that link up whatever they write because they're writing off the same page, you know, the same dispensation, the things that happen around there. So we need to understand that once the Bible meant lament, it's just felt you know, feel loss of sorrowful and a regret. I can't believe what's happening, you know. So we need to make sure that we, you know, be careful what we do, how we do it, and what we said. You understand me? And the other scripture that we use, again, where the Bible talks about the scepter, you know, the scepter, right? A scepter is a, a ceremonial staff, and it's often used by kings, right? And with its jewels and an animation, a scepter is a symbol of power. You know, um, remember there when uh, um, we read about Esther and, you know, and how the king stretched out the golden scepter 
to Esther. And it, it, it's a symbol of a power. It's a symbol of authority. And honey, you can come inside because once the golden scepter has stretched out to you, nobody can stop it. Nobody can come before the king and ask him, king, what you think you're doing? Because the king of the power to put them to death. You understand me? So we need to understand that when it comes to God, we need to go in the path that God wants us to go. So when we look at this woman and we look at it, she represents the lion and the lioness. And we understand that the danger when we go off course and we're not going the way of God, we can end up fall into the hand of, of the enemy. She was a strong woman. Verse 10 said, thy mother is like the vine in the blood planted by the water. She was, she was fruitful. She was full of branches. She was successful. But let me tell you something. It, was, it, it shan't be long that the enemy will come in. It's important as Christians that we know Jesus for ourselves. You understand? It's important that we doesn't follow the trend because the only person that will suffer is you and behave in a way and they gone scotch free and sometimes you are the one that suffers uh, because you are the one of a mandate you are the one who have the calling of god on your life you are the one who've been called to be a worship leader you are the one who called to be a preacher you are the one who called to be a teacher you are the one who called to be a musician you are the one who called to be a pastor you are the one who called to be a giver and to be merciful and exercise mercy. You are the one who God called to be an example to others and let people know that in spite of those who are behaving bad, God have a remnant who behave good, yeah? And I just cover some of these things. So we can't afford to fall into the trap of people because the devil will use people in order to drag you in his trap, you understand me? Let them treat you bad and then you should treat them bad. No, 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 no. The Bible said, you know, when we they treat us bad, you treat them good. The Bible said you are heaping up coal of fire on the head. Hallelujah. They, they are unsickled. You know, they can't sickle down. They can't believe. After all what I've done to you, you come back and say you love me. After all what I've done to you, you take me home. After all what I've done for you, you ask me, do I want you to do any shopping for you? Yeah, man. After all what you've done to me, I still said I love you and I'm always here for you. Yes, because you have got the love of God, and she had strong rods for the scepter, right? So we notice the word scepter, she got power, authority of them uh, that be ruled, she got power over them, and her statue was exalted among the thick branches. So the thick branches mean the big one, the people of high authority, or the big, big fish. You understand? We, are, uh, we talk about big fish, you know, big managers, you know, bro, yeah, you're a big fish, you know, and I'm a small fish in big water. I might get drowned and you got big fish, you know, you know, there was big bosses, big wigs, you know, they have band nine, band 10, band 15 and band 14 and all them something. They, while you're on your little band six, you know, you know, they are big fish. But don't worry about the big fish uh, because God will make you move among the big fishes uh, and God will give you favor. That's the blessings of God. God promised he will give you favor. But she was plucked up because she got herself messed up. She was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground and the east wind dry up her root. We need to understand that what we have is not because we are educated and it's not because, because we can do it. Do you know what? We, all of that is part of it, but the foundation because of God's mercies, yeah? God's mercies. The writer said, you know, they are new every morning and all I'm here to let you in this Bible study is this lament was going out to God's people to let this woman know and to let the, his people know that you are doing wrongs. You must stop doing wrongs. You must stop agree to wrongdoing. And if you know better, you must do better. You must be, and I must be an example of God. Yeah, We are children of God. We're not here to curse one another and to kill one another. We are not here because God said, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And God said, no murderer can enter in his kingdom. 
So when you see this lament going out, we could I could talk about it. I could go on it. I'm probably I'm going to touch a little bit more next week and, and to move on again. But this lament means that you need to protest heavily uh, against wrongdoing. Protest, protest against injustice. Don't support it. If you think it's wrong, don't say it's right. And if you think it's right, say it's right. You know, you know, please God and shame the devil. But you need to stand up, Father. I thank you for this evening. Thank you for your church. Thank you that we can come to look at this great lament that Ezekiel is lamenting over his people, over your people, to let them know they must brush up, they must pull up. We all fall short sometimes, but Lord, if we stand strong as children of God, we're asking you to guide us. Lord God, we're guilty. Sometimes we could help someone and we refuse to help them just to please somebody else. Sometimes we could let this, somebody know it is wrong. But Lord, because we don't like the person, we don't get them with them, sometimes we just kill them. And little did we know that nothing passed your eyes. I pray for the church of God. I pray for the people of God. These words, they are for our instructions. Lord, so help us to take them on board. Bless every family right now. Bless the church. Thank you for all these listeners who are tuning in both here, there, and everywhere. Bless their homes. Hallelujah. Bless their children. Bless them indeed. The Lord, raise them up as a giant, as a champion. Let no weapon that farm against them prosper. And Lord God, when the enemy come in like a flood, lift up standards. Uh, but I'm asking you to uphold them with your free spirit. Uh, and I'm asking you, Lord, to bear them up in your arms. Uh, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, hallelujah, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with them. Uh, in the name of the Father, Father, in the name of the Son and in the name of your Holy Spirit, make God people, let God people say amen. Hallelujah. Let God people say amen. I should be back, God's willing, on Sunday morning again. Yeah, I should be back, same time, same place. You know, uh, I shall be talking about the word of God again. I'm not going to talk about nothing. I don't want to talk about myself. I want to talk about God's people, right? And I thank you for all. You have done. I was hoping somebody would be there. So I don't want anyone to be trying to get in touch with me and they come. But guess what? Have a good evening. Enjoy the evening. Thank you, Sister Laman. Thank you, Sister Benny. Thank you, Sister, you know, uh, um, Sister Harris. And, and, and thank you, Sister Jean. And thank you. Thank everyone. Thank those on YouTube. Thank you on Facebook. You've been fantastic. Thank you, Sister Edwards, also for tuning in. Thank you, Sister San. Thank you, Sister Joyce. You are a fantastic set of people. And I'm going to get you out here with another song again. And guess what? Jesus, he is the main man, right? God bless you and God keep you. And God cause his face to shine on you. Don't let nobody shun you from the love of God. And let, let you just stay focused, right? I'm going to pray on a grace thriller song until you know the love of God, right? We love you and appreciate you. Have, enjoy the rest of the week, okay? If you could all the world find its money, go on, Grace, tell them. I didn't know I could sing so good. I need God for Jesus. That is to know about life Then you know nothing. Till you know. God bless you, Church of God. God bless you, people of God. You are fantastic. The loving hands that reaches down. God bless you, Sister Son. Love you all. God bless you, Sister McCarthy. We appreciate you. God bless you, Church of God. Holy until you know to know that God Wow, 
Now, what a song to get us out of here. Everybody, if you could call all their names from head to yard. But if you've not come face to face, God, Judge. He saving grace. Have a good evening. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine on you. God's willing to see you Sunday morning bright and early. That reaches down and lift him up. That he has fallen Then you know nothing Thank God for all my listeners I can't see some of you but I know you're there Thank you for tuning right so rich and pure, a measureless and strong, oh. and it shall forevermore endure. Enjoy your evening, enjoy your dinner. Catch up with your program now. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you, Sister Swire. God bless you, Mr. Swire. God bless you, wonderful people of God.